everyone and welcome some some of you viewers may be new to the channel here but uh, those of you who are following along from culinary innovation and food technology at Niagara College you will have likely seen this before but uh, those of you who are joining us from culinary management or chef skills welcome this is the uh, food technology channel that we've been uh, following along over the past uh, semester or so and this video specifically is going to help you log into and save files within ESHA Genesis R&D. This is a piece of software that will help you make nutrition facts tables, but I wanted to share information specifically about how to save files and reopen files because this is one of the biggest headaches that I see with the students from uh, the innovation program. And I wanted to make sure that you had a reference point to help you as you are starting your um, exploration of the software and its capabilities. So I'm not teaching you how to use ESHA and make nutrition facts tables. I'm just teaching you how to log in and teaching you how to save your files. So at the end of this video, you will be able to log into ESHA Genesis R&D using Niagara College's VMware. You'll understand the unique file saving methods in VMware. You'll understand the unique file saving methods also for ESHA Genesis R&D. You will save and reopen files in VMware. You'll explore the Genesis R&D software capabilities. But again, this is a reminder, this is not to teach you how to use ESHA. Your teacher will teach you that. And you'll learn the troubleshooting procedure if VMware or ESHA is not working. So, first and foremost, you need to be able to log into VMware. And I'm giving you the website here desktopnc.niagaracollege.ca and this will link out to the VMware and I'm going to do it with you in just a moment here. You're going to use your normal login, just the same login that you'd use for your email and Blackboard. And then from there, we're going to look for the Genesis R&D symbol. Now do be patient. This, you will require an internet connection, but you can use this anywhere that you are. And let me just explain uh, briefly what on earth is VMware? Well, the way I describe it is a little bit like a Russian doll. Honestly, what VMware is, is VM stands for a virtual machine. And in essence, what IT has done for us is they have made a computer within a computer that we can then access anywhere that the internet serves. And so they have made us a virtual computer and in essence, imagine you're almost, it's almost like you were walking over to the, the, the computer lab at the library and logging into one of those computers. They have set a static license on a virtual machine and you are logging into that static license. Now, remember the word static license because that's going to come up in one of my later slides. Niagara College currently has 30 static licenses and that means that if everyone in the entire program were to try and log on at the exact same time, that could cause a problem because we only have 30 licenses. But that said, we know that at any given time, especially right now while we're running more asynchronous classes, the likelihood of 30 people all logging on at the exact same moment is pretty slim. And so we do encourage you to be patient. So just remember, VMware is like having a computer within a, a computer that you can then log into on any computer that the internet serves, as long as you're able to access the Niagara College network. So I'm going to jump in and try to log into VMware myself right now. So bear with me for a moment and I'm going to switch screens. All right, so we found desktopnc.niagaracollege.ca and at this point I'm going to log into VMware Horizon. I personally prefer to use the HTML access. That's the web-based browser access. And I just find that um, it adds one less app to my computer and it, um, it's as streamlined as any other 
platform. So I'm going to access it and I've typed in my um, my login information for Niagara College and I've typed in my password and I'm going to hit login. At this point there's a, a, a little bit of a lag. Now that's partly because my internet is slow. I live in a rural area and partly because it's just the nature of the VMware. But uh, it will log in and just imagine yourself sitting in the library and um, for those of you who are first semester students, you haven't had the chance to, likely to go to Niagara College's library, but you're in for a treat. Uh, it was just recently renovated and there's some fun uh, learning spaces that are up there and hopefully you'll be able to return to that space as soon as possible. So it there is a little bit of a lag and we'll just be patient here. Yay! So it's loaded up and it does look very much just like a Niagara College computer lab computer. So here's Genesis R&D up here in the top corner and there's a couple of last things that are trying to log on here. But this warning, this warning, items saved to this computer will be erased on log off. Do pay very close attention to that as soon as you shut the window for VMware honestly everything just vanishes and it's like a brand new computer the next time you log on so you have to be very deliberate about how you save things okay everything's ready to go i'm going to click on genesis r d and here it comes and fingers crossed we have had some bugs and if you get an error message coming up at this point as it's loading do take a screenshot or do take a photograph of that error message and email it to your instructor as soon as you can because that error message is going to be sent by your instructor to ITS. Please don't go as individuals to ITS, send it to your instructor and then your instructor will flag it to ITS. All right, I'm in Esha. I'm going to make a really simple recipe. What should I make? Banana milkshake? It's always my favorite default. So banana milkshake. And it's going to make one serving and I'm going to click OK. And in there I'm going to put a banana. And I'm going to put one fresh medium banana, select. And again, we're going to have more videos to walk you through how to actually do full nutrition facts tables, but I'm going to uh, just quickly make up one banana milkshake just so I have a file to save. So I'm going to do one each banana and I'm going to do milk. I just typed in milk and I want to find from my supplier. Let's switch that out so I get health. Can I find the Health Canada file? I'm trying to find, you know what? I can't find Canada, so I'm going to go to the United States Department of Agriculture. Uh, Specific reference 28, and I want to find milk, not buffalo milk or coconut milk or malted milk. I want to milk. And so I'm going to go milk 2% USDA uh, SR28, select, and let's put in one cup of milk. Sound like a good banana milkshake? Fantastic. Let's click on view label. And if I blow this up a little bit, there is my... Nutrition facts table. Now I do need to go and make some edits, but let's say I'm out of time and I'm going to come back and edit this later. So this is where I do want to save my file. So at this point, I can go up to file and I can click save as, and this is going to save it to that virtual database. But if I click on save as, oh no, as soon as I shut this off, it's going to vanish. So I need to save to file. So when I'm saving to file, it's saving as an ESHA data file, an EXL format file. And honestly, that is only openable on ESHA. And there's a lot of usefulness for this. At a later point in time, I can come back and edit my banana milkshake. Maybe I want to add chocolate to my banana milkshake or cocoa powder. I can come back and edit this and make iterative changes to my recipe. So saving the ESHA data file is really useful. What I need to do in VMware is I need to save it on the desktop. So I'm going to save my banana milkshake EXL file to the desktop. And that's now exported 
And if I minimize this window, I have to make sure I'm minimizing ESHA and not minimizing the VMware. There's my banana milkshake EXL file. Now I do want to show you another file format here. So if I go back into it, come on, reopen. There we go. Um, no, it's, let's see if it, if it's just an error message just popped up. What I want to do is see if I can show you a different way of saving this file. So if I click on print to PDF, fingers crossed, I'm going to save it to the desktop again. Save to desktop and save. Click OK and it will save. And if I minimize this, here comes my banana milkshake label in a PDF format. This is a format that your teachers like to see. Um, this is the sort of format as a PDF that you could keep in a binder. Pardon all these windows just popping open. This is the sort of, if you're at a food service operator, you could keep this format, uh, the PDF, in a binder for um, uh, clients and customers at the restaurant who might want additional nutrition facts information. The other file format that I want to show you is, let me minimize that and go back to Genesis r &D. And uh, it hasn't stopped working. I'm not going to close the program. I'm just going to minimize that. If I click on the label proper, I can go to, if I right click actually, I can export, and I can export this image file, and I can save that as a bitmap or as a JPEG. And this is the file format that is preferred by graphic designers. If you've got someone who's designing your label for you, you might want to save it in a JPEG file format. So I can save it like that, and I want to save it on the desktop. And I click Save, Export Seceded. At this point, I'm going to assume that I am happy with my files, and I will close Genesis. And there is my PDF file and my banana milkshake label. At this point, I'm going to show you a method that I'm going to use for getting these files out into the real world. So I'm going to open Google Chrome within the VMware because imagine you've got to get you've got to get that out into the real world. College. And so I'm going to open my email in here, open my, I'm a staff member. So I have to, hopefully this login, oh no. So it's going to go through the whole thing, but honestly, what you need to do, I don't need to show you how to log into your email. In here, you have to imagine these files are inside the tiny computer, which is inside your computer. And the moment that I shut this down, I need to make sure that those files are actually back out into the real world. So by emailing them to myself, I know that they're out there. You got to open your email in the browser inside the VMware, email them to yourself and then from there you need to check on a device that's outside so I often say uh, pull up your smartphone and look on your smartphone to see that those files have gotten back out now if I reopen Genesis R&D if I want to reopen I can't reopen a PDF file but I can reopen an EXL file and so what I want to do is not go to open if I go into open and I look in recipe my banana, my banana milkshake is not going to be in there. So if I go into file, actually, I need to go into database, not into file. I need to go into database and go to import. And this is where I'm going to be importing my banana milkshake EXL file. And so you have to think about this. If you are 
working with a file that you email to yourself, you'll have to open your email in the browser. And now if I go to open recipe, there's my banana milkshake. And now I can work on it again and I can add cocoa powder. And so this is, this is my biggest output. T today I really just wanted you to focus on the file approach that's necessary for being able to get into Esha and get out of Esha. So let's just, I'm just going to jump back here. So in summary, save your work files to the desktop inside VMware, open your preferred email service on an internet browser inside VMware, and email the work files to yourself. I'm going to highly recommend that you save an EXL file so that you can edit and go back and print off things and make changes as necessary. So open your preferred email service on an internet browser outside VMware. I often say use a smartphone so that way you are not confused on which browser you're looking at. You know your, smart, your smartphone is not using VMware and if you can see that file and that file attachment in a browser outside of VMware then you know your files are there. Don't shut the VMware until you know all your files are saved because as soon as you shut the window, everything disappears. Just remember there are a wide variety of different files in Genesis, so make sure you're saving the right file. So are you saving the PDF label file? That is useful for record keeping, but you can also do a PDF spreadsheet file and that gives a lot more granular detail about every single ingredient that you put in there. And it's really useful for doing iterations so that you know which ingredient contributed how much to your nutrition facts. And then you can make adjustments up or down on different ingredients to get the product that you want. There are the graphic format files, that JPEG or TIFF or bitmap files, which are useful for label design. And then there's the EXL files, the database files that are used by Genesis for editing the files again. And again, a reminder, if you need to open the file, you are going to open the EXL file. You can't reopen a PDF. You can't reopen a JPEG. You can only reopen EXL files. So open your VMware and within the VMware browser, find their email where you save those files. Download the files to the VMware desktop, open your Genesis R&D, and then import the files using the database tab. Don't look for it in the file open. Use the database tab to get those files back open. Last but not least, if you have any trouble, take a screenshot of your error message. And so if you if you know how to do a print screen and save, that's the best way to do it. If you can't do that, uh, use your smartphone and photo, er, photograph the error message that you're seeing, and then send that error message by email to your instructor as soon as possible. Your instructor will contact ITS to get the solution fixed. Do be patient. ESHA is a very powerful piece of software, and um, students in general really enjoy working with it, but there are bugs in it and your teachers know this as well. And so do be patient and your teachers are going to be tracking ITS's progress on any error, um, any errors that are out there. So we're all going to be flexible and patient with one another and use our good four hours of um, education that we're going to be respectful and reciprocal in the process as, as we progress. Honestly, I hope that you have a lot of fun using Esha. It's a tool that I really enjoy and all your food technology uh, colleagues use it very, very frequently because it's such a useful tool. So take care. I always look forward to your questions and your comments and we hope to see you soon.